good morning. Right, let me just invite our guest this morning, Marie. From Get Up and Glow with Maz. This will be fun. I met Marie a few weeks ago now and I was really taken with her energy and her outlook on life and how she has embraced the menopause in her own special way. There she is. So I've sent you a request, Marie. You should see it somewhere. Um, so we're waiting for her. So yeah, we're going to just have a chat about what she's been up to. I'm going to ask her about uh, different parts of her life and how she has... All right. I just need another request. Um, how she has really kind of turned her life around, actually. I was really quite impressed with Marie by the time we finished chatting about exactly, you know, how far she'd come and what she'd been doing with herself. And just, you know, the whole different approach to life as we're getting older. It was really refreshing. So, Marie, can you see me yet? Pop it in the comments. If you have a problem, we can always quit and restart. Unable to join. Okay, let's try again sending another request see if that works this is when you need like a little um talent isn't it like juggling or something hey <laughs> there she is i'm here now <laughs> how are you doing i'm doing okay thank you good it's good to see you again i was just saying to the guys that are joining us now and then obviously for people on catch up later we met a few weeks ago didn't we and we had a really good chat yeah. and um i just loved your approach to life and the stuff that you've experienced and you've gone through and how you've you know I don't know it's just like you've just kind of you've gone on quite a big journey I decided by the time we finished talking about things things that you'd experienced with work and your health and the menopause so I just thought it'd be good for us to have a chat for the next half an hour yeah. um about those areas so um firstly you know Tell us a little bit about yourself before I... S I've got two or three little questions for you, no biggies, but just tell us a little <laughs> bit about you so the guys can understand you a bit better. Um, yeah, so my, my name's Marie and um, Marie Grady. I've got to call myself Get Up and Glow with Maz. But I'm Get Up and Glow with Maz because I just lost my account, Maz, on a Monday. So I've had to start all over again. So if you've watched me before and you're like, why she got two accounts, I got kicked out of Instagram, basically. So I were at the verge of like giving up, like oh, I, I'm going to give up. No, I'm not. I'm going to just start from the beginning and just start over again because that's life in general, isn't it? Yeah. You get kicked in the teeth and you've just got to start over. So I'm like, it's just an Instagram page. I'll be all right. Get over it. So I've started again. So that's where I'm at now. Um, I'm 56. Um, I started my business when I was 49. And when I was 49, I was probably one of them women who had plodded for a while. Um, just plodded along and not really knew I wanted to do something, but wasn't sure. So I was a single parent all my life. Uh, been single a long, long time. <laughs> um, uh, so I, I brought up my son on my own. And obviously when he got to 16, 17, it's like, oh, right, what do I do now? Because as the saying goes, I put all my eggs in one basket. I wanted it to be there for the football and holidays. And, you know, I just wanted to be there at every occasion. And I put everything, everything on hold, really, career-wise. But also, I probably thought I weren't good enough as well. So a lot of stuff's happened in the last three years, quite significant in the last three years, where I've, um, what's the word, where we relearn ourselves. So I've taught myself a lot of stuff, watched people like yourself, learned a lot of stuff from other people, and then thought I should talk about it because people don't talk about it. When I started with the perimenopause, I was in employment. And um, there's a lady on here who's talking about that, bringing it into em employment. And I'm like, God, I wish that was around like three or four years ago. Because people do say, um, you're not looking your best today or you look a bit rough today. And you're like, I don't feel great, you know. Um, and people just think you're some crazy lady, you know. And, and when I look back, it was quite bad, really, when I think about it, when I look back. 
because you didn't know that you're going through the perimenopause. So you, you know, it probably started around 48, 49, 50, but it hit at 53. So, and now I'm, back, I'm here. And then the last three years, I've gone through my mum and dad passing away, my dad having multiple amputations, having skin reactions myself, because we get reactions that I'm like, what's happening to my body? Um, and I have I had massive reactions here around the neck area. And because I'm in the skincare industry, that knocked my confidence. So it was like a revolving circle. Um, but um, I've now done a year of love. It's ongoing, in it? Grief is ongoing. But the last year <clears throat> has been really tough, especially because it happened in lockdown. So it's like, I'm going to lose my business. And it's just one thing after another. And I just feel like every everything that you hit with, you've got to find a way out. There is a way out. I did fall into depression, but I also then said to myself, I can talk myself into the depression, but I know I can talk myself out of it. But I did it naturally as well. So I didn't want to go on antidepressants. I didn't want to go on any tablets. I'd seen my mother and father on medication all their lives and I think that's where that comes from as well plus about all the toxic things that are around so I've relearned myself or retaught myself I don't even remember the right words I'm not right good with my words I make my own up <laughs> um I retaught myself about foods um what we put on our skin which I already knew that anyway, but I went more in depth with it and found some interesting facts out and started doing changes, making changes basically. Yeah, no, and it's fantastic. So that but you just started to touch on a couple of things I wanted to ask you about. So what made you start to think about the food when you were going through all of this? Well, that that actually happened by uh, with the reactions. Yeah. So I thought, right, is it the thyroid? Is it food? Is it stress? My worst reaction was, uh, I, I had it on and off for three years, these reactions. The doctor said hyperthyroidism, uh, but he said I was on the border. So you don't need medication. So come back in three months. Then when I went back in three months, I'd left the job that I was doing and did my own, went self-employed full time, what I do now. I took a, a risk um, yeah. because I was so down. I thought I can't do both and I get more, what's the word, with the, the uh, company I'm with and the people I'm around, the positive energy I was getting from them, I just thought I need to be more around that and I'm going to take a chance. I took the chance and it paid off um, and I put my all into it. Um, I forgot what you've asked me now. <laughs> You know, that's really great. So it was more about the, um, that is all really, really important. So I kind of want you to get time, I want to ask you about that as well. But um, about, the, it was about the food. So you said you started off because it was like, what's going on with my oh, skin? Sorry. And then there were all these different options. So then you started to look into the foods. Yeah, because um, I had this massive reaction. And someone randomly said to me, have you followed the medical medium? So th mm. that is basically where it came from. <clears throat> so I'm like, no. And this was when I were in a depressive state. So I'll be honest, I watched him in a very depressive state for about two months, listened to him and listened to him. And I'm a visual learner. So by just listening, not reading, I just listened and listened and like the penny just started to drop. I'm like, right, so maybe if I remove some of these foods, maybe it'll make a difference. And then I bought his, uh, his book, Cleanse to Heal. And I started reading bits. It's like an exact, exact, yeah. Exact, yeah. Yeah, it's like that. You know what word I'm trying to say. And um, I just listened and watched his videos because I learn a lot better that way. So I took little things out. I've just finished my celery juice, actually. I don't know if anyone else on here a drink celery juice. And at first I was like, oh, celery juice, seriously? But I did the cleanse. I took the plunge, made my mind up, got focused, did a cleanse for a week, and all of a sudden, I started think things started to change. So I took eggs out first, then I took coffee out, um, <clears throat> and then I started doing the celery juice. Now I don't do it religiously, but I try and do it at least three three days a week. 
because I slipped back into my old ways, then the food, I thought, right, so you, you can't help yourself because you're out, outside environments, there's cake and temptation there. So yeah, I have the odd thing now and again, but then I could feel myself slipping again into my, I could feel it coming back. And then when I slip into depression, I come for eat. Yeah. So I do the two hand in hand. I'm not one of these who don't eat. I, I just want all them things that make me big or make me put weight on. And um, I, I seriously looked at it and thought, no, it really does work. You've got to take them foods out that are causing the problems, but you've got to find out what they are because everyone's different. Yeah. And I found by doing this, my skin cleared up as well. Um, I, I made sure I did lots of self-care, uh, you know, cleansing and toning and using the products that I use, but also the other bits that go with it. Because you can't just put a moisturiser on and be like, oh, she's recovered. It's a, it's a, it's a whole process in it. And yes. it's realising that everything goes hand in hand. So, yes. Yeah. That's yes. when I initially thought, right, there's something about food. There's something about what's in our food in in every you know, in the supermarkets, there's something going on in the big bad world out there. And that's when it started and it works. Yeah. And you're and you're absolutely right. I mean, you've done it for yourself and seen the differences. And that's just with your I say just, that's just with your skin, but that will have had a positive impact on how you were dealing with the perimenopause and going, you know, to menopause. And it is, everything is interconnected, isn't it? It's not just about what you put on your skin. It's about how you eat, how you feel, how you're yeah. moving. You see, you can't just, uh, I love what you said, you can't just slap on the moisturiser and say, there you go, I'm better now. It's, it is, does take a bit more work than that, doesn't it? Yeah. So it's brilliant that you looked at it from that holistic, you know, everything is connected viewpoint. Mm -hmm. So that's how, you know, that's why when I asked you about how did you come about the food you did go for a tangent because it's not just about the food is it it makes you think about all the other stuff at the same time yeah, so, when you, so what did you so what made you go from because sometime in your past you must have used all kinds of products like we all do mm -hmm. what was the point that made you go no I'm going to start looking at you know toxic free products natural products what was the tipping point for you oh good question so I've always been one of them people who've, who've been able to buy anything yeah so i can buy anything i can if i if i was flushed i got a middle brand from a certain you know a chemist um a middle of the road brand or uh, and if i wasn't flush i could go and buy a product at a pound yeah and get away with it but then um when the menopause perimenopause started i don't think people have found this around the jawline here this started to itch like crazy that was the first step of, of like this skin change. And I'm like, what's going on? Why, why, why is this happening? And then I started to look for, oh no, I went to the doctors. They said, give me this cream. Then I had some blood stub and a nurse actually told me, she said, I bet you're allergic to MI. It was just a nurse who was taking blood. Now, she used a high-end brand, and she said, look at this article. She had a news article in a little drawer. This is how it happened. And she's like, so I use this brand, and I've used it for 15 years, and I had a reaction, and I found this article, and it, they'd added MI. Now, it's a very, very, very big word that I can't say, but if you look up MI, it's a preservative that they put in products to um, prolong the shelf life. So I said, oh, right, I'll have a look. So when I found the brand that I'm using, it had in it no MI, methyl loss or something. I can't even, yeah. I'm not even going to try. Um, so I thought, oh, right, I'll try this brand then. It's new, it's exciting, and it was, it was a year old at the time. And I can do a little part-time job alongside what I'm doing. So maybe it's, I'll give it a go. I've got nothing to lose. So I tried it. It worked. And that the rest is history, as they say. Literally, I decided to be um, an ambassador because I needed a job anyway. And I just thought, you know, I have nothing to lose. I'll give it a go. The worst case scenario is my skin gets better. And that was really the start of the skincare 
of like where I found things out that I didn't even know. I was quite naive, I'll be honest. So seven years ago, I was really naive to what were in your products and stuff like that. And that's where my journey started, really. And then this, all this stopped. But then the, the other bit, well, that was just another different story. I mean, the reaction I had was just before my mum passed away, three weeks. And it's interesting, isn't it? You go to the doctors and they say, is there anything that you've done differently? You know? And I'm like, no. I, well, have you had some bad news or anything? Or have you taken something, you know, that you, sh you wouldn't normally have taken? It's usually nuts or something or strawberries as well sometimes, isn't it? Yeah. And I actually just said, yeah, I've just had a text message off my mum saying, get me out of here or else I'll be next. And I think I've gone into shock because I knew she was dying. And um, they put it down to a stress reaction, reaction, which did tie in with all the other reactions. Yeah. So it still stayed around for a while when she passed. But then I knew I had to do some self-care on myself, like yeah. I said before. It was a multitude of things. So weren't you fortunate that you had that conversation and that you yeah. saw that news article? Because it sounds like that that was the tipping point for you to think what yeah. and make you think a little bit differently about the stuff you put on your skin. Because, yeah, yeah I'd have done the same, um, bought all kinds of different products. And some of them, and when I was flush and I was younger and, um, you know, before kids and all that stuff in a good career, I would buy really quite expensive uh, skincare stuff. But if I look at it now on the Think Dirty app, yeah, bloody awful. Yeah, um, perfect. And I thought I was work. doing myself a favour, and it, my skin looked pretty good, you know, and I felt mm -hmm. fine. But in, it, this stuff is, it's, it smells nice, it looks nice, and it can cost a lot of money, but it is absolutely laced with so many different t toxic ingredients. Yes. And we are not made aware of it. And we, like you said, you can't even pronounce that thing. No. So you're not going to pay any attention to it. You don't recognise it. You can't pronounce it. And we just go, we just think, surely if they're selling it, it's safe. But that unfortunately is not the case, is it? And you saw the change so quickly when you made the change from all the stuff you were using to, and is it Tropic Skincare that you're talking yes. about? Because that's who you now work for. <laughs> yeah, what happened as well, even though that journey was going on with the thyroid, they, they did send me for tests, actually. And uh, obviously, I took along my skincare, and the doctor did thing, and he said, "Oh yeah, you have had a reaction." And how bizarre is it that that nurse said that seven years ago? I, I actually did go and go, get tests two years ago. I said, "Well, these are what I use, so I, you know, what is it?" And he come back. He said, "You're allergic to MI," and I said, "But it's not in my products." He went, "Yeah, but it's in your cleaning products." Yeah. So goes, the same ingredient in your cleaning products yeah. could be in your skincare products. Yeah. Or, well, it, not could, it is. It is. And that's not a nice thought either, so is it? I yeah, have to swap it my goes, cleaning products. Yeah, and you come into contact with that. And even if you wear rubber gloves and stuff, you're breathing it in, it's in the air. <clears throat> and anything that touches your skin, you absorb um, something like 60 or 70% 70, 70 of that in less than a minute. So it's, it's that quick. And then it's in your blood supply, it's in your body. Then your body's got to try and detoxify that. Then we're going back to the medical medium, aren't we? Yeah. You know, your body works really hard all the time to get rid of all this stuff. <clears throat> and also, it's not even the one product that might have MI. It's the MI compounded by several other things yeah. that have come up as a problem, but they're still sort of suppressing your body, other chemicals or fragrances Candles. or air fresheners or yeah. you name it it can even be the carpet it was in the, the plugins well. it was in the you know the plugins that you put in the wall mm. it mm. was in them so i got rid of all them yeah you know, i did have a couple of them so i was like checking everything it's in a very high end high end washing up liquid yeah it's in that um and like looking on the back of all the products going oh it's in that and it's and it's in that and even though I knew what I knew about skincare, I didn't know that about cleaning products, that 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 ingredient was in there. You know, we yeah. do know cleaning products are toxic, but I was still naive about, oh, well, it's only a bit of washing up liquid. It's fine. Yeah. But it was it's, touching my hands. Yeah. So. It, and it's a, it's a, and also then it's on your plates and your cutlery and your cups and you might rinse it, but there's probably still going to be a trace of this stuff on 
everything in the home and that's not to make people worry but it's just the awareness it's it's never really in isolation it we are absolutely bombarded by stuff and that's just one chemical in thousands yeah. so you know but that one is particularly you're particularly sensitive to but there are many thousands that we come into contact every day so no wonder we get reactions we put on weight we're tired we get mental health issues um all sorts of things can happen and it's it can be compounded by what is in our environment and what is on our skin so you know you're a perfect example of that so something else i wanted to ask you before we, before we finish it's not just been about this stuff has it you've also sort of changed your outlook on life and your habits yeah. and something i wanted to sort of remind you of is <clears throat> and it's what i kind of called this chat is anything is possible mm -hmm. and i love that little story you gave me about what happened some years ago so could you tell us about the anything is possible mindset um it well it, it is about it well i've i've, I've learned most of what i've done in lockdown yeah because um reading self-help well listening listening to self-help um books um how to be a badass <laughs> which believe it or not i've put on again this morning even though i've read it because um i feel like i'm starting all over again so i've changed my mindset um i've worked on it was january really when i knew that i and i had to change something i couldn't carry on like i were but i went right back to my childhood as well um and someone told me you have to go right back and dig right deep and there'll be something somewhere in your childhood that will trigger things in your adulthood. Um, so from that, that's where I started relearning everything. But it stemmed from, um, I had a chat with a lady. She's, um, she does counselling, but she said you need to go right deep, deep, deep back. And it won't, it's not nice what you find sometimes. But then retrain yourself and find out what's making you unhappy. If there's something that's making you unhappy, address it and change it sometimes you can't get rid of it but another thing that was making me unhappy was alcohol so if i drank biggest party animal going me i party 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 i'm known as a party animal i found that the day after it made me unhappy at the time it was great but the time after so it's retraining yourself as well so i'll go right go, go right back to that really um to retrain my mindset um, and that's where my journey began, really. And everyone can do it. So everyone can come out. Of, everyone can come out of depression. It's not easy. Um, it's quite difficult. But you've got to go. You've got to dig deeper. And it, it, it stemmed back to my my dad. It sounds. It might sound awful, this, but it's not. It stems back from my dad never recognizing any achievements that I did, and never saying well done. And that's it. That's it. So instead of concentrating on that, I concentrated on the good bits, you know, that, that they brought. And that was humour and laughter and fun. And I think, do you know what? Just concentrate on that. It's not the end of the world. But that's where a lot of my fear, anxieties comes from. It's not about what she said down the road or what he just said about me. It comes from it comes quite deep, and you have to go back and find out what it is that's stopping you from moving forward and being what you want to be. You know, it doesn't matter whatever you want to be, whatever you want to do. My son does it as well. You know, he he does it all the time. He's scared of this, but it comes from the things that were said to him by a certain person when he was younger, and that's yes. where it comes from. But he's learning to turn it around you know what yeah. I mean uh, but I believe that everyone can change but you've got to make the changes there's a saying somewhere I forgot how it goes yeah you've, so, got, to, you've got to put the work in and um, that, that counsellor that said that to you that was a very wise you know bit of bit of guidance for you because um, and anyone that's watched me before I do talk about this a lot but we learn about life before we're seven <clears throat> everything everything that happens before we're about seven we absorb and take it as the gospel so anything that doesn't happen like for you you didn't really quite get that praise that you were looking for 
or things that do happen, things you hear, see, smell, experience, that is how we mould the world around us. And that's where our limiting beliefs come from. And as we get older, they just get worse. You don't because, think you're worthy of it, do you? Yeah. Think, well, why, why try it? Because I'm not really worthy of getting that recognition. Because it's happened before. And to keep me safe, I will just make sure I don't. Yeah. yeah. So it, we, we, have to, we start these patterns that are subconscious and we just repeat them and repeat them, even though we're not aware of it. Because we learned that when we were young and we learned that that is what the world is. But yeah, by the time you're an adult, it can be quite crippling. Yeah. Because you are inadvertently continually running that same pattern because it, you think it keeps you safe or it's the way the world is. But yeah, it may, you're just uh, such an inspiration because you looked at that and you started to change your focus. Yeah. And that, you know, you can say that to people, but not everyone's going to find that simple. And you probably didn't find it simple. But the fact is you stuck at it until you found a way out. And that is really, really commendable. But so many people, especially possibly women, you know, we get tired by the time we get to the age we are. We've got so much else going on. To think of having to try and change stuff that happened that long ago, it's almost easier just to plod on the way you are in some mm -hmm. cases, isn't it? But for you to just say, no, I'm not going to do this anymore, is just, just amazing. And that is why I wanted to get you on here today, just to anyone that watches gets that little bit of inspiration to follow something that you've done or whatever hassles they've got in their lives or... Like you said, you were, you were plodding for some years. I'm tired of doing that. Then, you know, there is a way out and anything is really possible, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Um, I mean, um, I, I meet so many women who literally are stuck because of fear. That's it. You, you dig deeper, dig, dig deep and everything. And the main word that comes out is fear um, and insecurity. They're bothered about what other people think. And it, and it narrows it down to just fear. I mean, you know, I, I was a bit nervous about coming on here, but I think, just press the button, it's fine. Uh, you know, I do lives on Facebook as well, um, but I know so many people couldn't do my job. But I also had a great conversation with a friend who's fantastic at admin, works in an office, dead organised. I'm like, yeah, but I couldn't do your job. It's not, it, nobody's wrong or right, you know? No. But it's, it feels sometimes when you're on an online job, like, have you seen that stupid job she has online? You know, I'm like, it's my job. It's my, my passion. It's my purpose. Just like you are a fantastic secretary, I couldn't be one because I hate computers. <laughs> I can do videos. I can dance about. I can make. I can make great videos. I can clip them, and I'm still learning all the time. And I, I know I need to get better at it, but I'm teaching myself new skills all the time. And everyone can teach themselves a new skill that yeah. they're passionate about. Yeah, and and we must do that as well, mustn't we? Because that's what keeps us young. That's what keeps us interested. Yeah. Life is for learning right up until the end, isn't it? It's not to get to a point and think, oh, I've done that. It's, it's exactly that. It's just continually experiencing life, pushing yourselves, pushing ourselves to do more, anything, anything that brings us joy and happiness. Yeah. yeah. It, was, it was great. We had a meeting with some, uh, um, a, a few of our team and one of the young girls who's really good on Instagram, she said something to me and I said, yeah, but do you know that you can do this, this and this? She's like, no. I was like, come here I'll teach you <laughs> and she's like oh my god I can't believe you know how to do that and I'm like no you press this button and you do this and you do that and she's like who's taught you how to do that so I've taught myself <laughs> so she's quite shocked because she was only like 27 and I'm like I know how to do that <laughs> done how it's done no I love that it's brilliant so tell the guys that are watching and catching up later, how can they get in touch with you if they want to find out more about how they can care for their skin or if they're just so inspired by you, they just want to, you know, find out more about you? Oh, but yeah, just obviously jump over, give us a follow. But in my bio is my link tree. So in there is a skin finder test that you can do free just to find out what's the best skincare for you. Or if you want to book a one-to-one -one call on Zoom or anything like that. Or if, obviously, if you're pretty local, I can pop around with the products and you try, try them yourself. But we also do, we actually do WhatsApp pampers. I know it sounds crazy, but we do WhatsApp pampers or Zoom pampers. 
uh, where you just get people in a group. And I actually put videos in within the hour. And then we do some interaction in the WhatsApp groups. They work really well, actually, believe it or not, because you're unlimited. Well, you can have up to 250 people in your group. And I just call it a one-hour, one-stop shop, you know, with um, a bit of interaction. And it's a great way to introduce the products to um, a large number of friends because, uh, you know, I do do pampers, but we went to do a pamper. Three people couldn't come because they tested positive because of yeah. this. And before you know it, I just, I, I had no pamper. So yeah. it's a great way to do it. <clears throat> and nobody can cancel on you. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's like, brilliant. you won't have to sit on the sofa, you can't cancel. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And it's brilliant, isn't it? The way that things can have just evolved. Mm. And, you know, I remember you saying that you thought when all this happened, well, how on earth are you going to keep doing what you're doing when people yeah. are so used to touching and filling the products? But actually, it's just gone off the scale, isn't it? Yeah. Maybe because people are now looking to look after themselves a little bit better and, this... and are open to doing things in a different way. Yeah. And there's like 30 day money back guarantee with it, everything. Yeah. So even if you got a product and it didn't agree with you, you can send it back. Uh, you can either return it or swap it for something else for the same value. But yeah, the, the, everything's in my link tree. You know, yeah. I've got my, oh, and my podcast as well. Oh, yes. So I'll have to get you on that. Yes, that would be amazing. So yeah. And so that I just made up as I went along. <laughs> well, do you know what? And sometimes that is the best way, isn't it? If you, if like, you start thinking about things too much, it'll never happen. And I did, I did, I did that. Actually, the podcast, I do it with my friend Kim, who's a spiritual healer, who I um, knew for 20 years ago, but I hadn't seen her. Through lockdown, like, is that you, Kim? I'm like, yeah. So then she said, I want to do a podcast. So she does my healing for me. That's another thing that I do. Um, I have Reiki, but she does spiritual healing. And um, that's been interesting, you know, the reactions after it, because they've yeah. all been different. First time I slept, second time I was very angry. Um, another, the third time I was very sad. And the fourth time she actually said to me, you're going under again, you need to self-care. And she said, you're absolutely shattered. Yeah. So I took her advice, you know, took some time out and slept for 14 hours. <laughs> yeah i know so it can be done it can oh be yeah done. but and it's I, ongoing you know, i love all that stuff i'm well into it you know i'm open-minded to everything because i think there's there's a place for all of it and i love that because she was sort of she was kind of keep she was keeping an eye on your health from a different from mm -hmm. a different viewpoint that you couldn't be aware of yeah so yeah and it's this like a uh, team approach i think for health as well it's not doesn't have to be all up to us it's up to us to get the right people around us that can help us be healthy and stay healthy yeah. so we don't have to feel like it's all up to us on our own that has been absolutely brilliant thank you so much thank you for having me i will pop you this up on the grid and yeah i'll put your your i'll tag you in it so that everybody can find you right. guys just give just give maria a follow because she's wonderful and any questions she's there for you with any of the skincare stuff and uh, we'll have to catch up again soon because it's definitely great. yeah all right have yeah. a great day all right bye bye <laughs> bye <laughs>